it is me Christina I've got my camera back so get ready for content today I'm gonna to be making a slightly different video from what I usually make because I feel like this video needs to exist if you guys are new around here or you didn't know I have a feeding tube I am 100% feeding tube fed at this point point. and if you really want to know a little bit more about how and why I have this tube I've made a video all about it I will link it up here and I will link it down there for this video, I kind of just want to focus on showing you what a feeding tube is like. Because I know feeding tubes aren't really that common. And most people probably don't even know somebody who has one. Never mind having seen one in person. And I think they're especially uncommon among people my age. Usually when you hear about somebody getting a feeding tube, they're either a baby or they're really old. And because most people have never been exposed to feeding tubes, there's a lot of mystery that seems to surround it. I know that before I got my feeding tube placed, I did not know anything about them. But because there is all this mystery surrounding them, I think that they make people feel a little bit uncomfortable and sometimes kind of freaked out. It's okay, we are all human. We all feel uncomfortable around things that are strange and new to us. I know that some of my friends and even some of my family members we're pretty darn squeamish about it when I first got it placed. And to be honest, I was a little bit too. But now everything's cool. We've accepted it. It's part of my life. It's part of their life. It's not a big deal. They eat. I don't. I'm a super cheap date. But not everybody understands. I do come across a lot of people in life, as you do, who see it and are freaked out by it. Or they have questions. And they're very curious. And I think that it's something that probably everybody has questions about, but nobody really wants to ask them. Like I can tell when someone has a question and they're trying to think about whether or not it's appropriate to ask. And to me, I mean, it's always appropriate to ask. I have no problem answering questions, spread awareness, whatever. But not everybody is that open. So I understand where that hesitation comes from. And I kind of appreciate it because I do know a lot of people with feeding tubes who have them for reasons like an eating disorder or cancer and they just don't want to be reminded about it every five seconds. But people are curious and I feel like by stripping away some of that mystery that surrounds it, we can maybe take a step forward into understanding and maybe make it a little bit less freaky. So I decided to show you mine and just give you a little bit of an overview of how it works and what I use it for. Drum roll, please. This is my feeding tube. This is something that they call a Mickey button. It is a low profile feeding tube that goes straight into my stomach through my abdominal wall. And the greatest thing about this is that the tube extension itself can be taken on and off so that you don't always have to have a long tube hanging off of it. Looks like a little air valve on like a pool floaty or a beach ball, right? Totally not scary and not freaky. So this is what the tube actually looks like in all of its glory. This one has never been inside of me. This one is actually a little bit too long for me because there are different sizes. Obviously everybody is a little bit different and they have different amounts of tissue so they have different lengths to accommodate for that. And also some people have ones that are a little bit long so that it can accommodate for extra swelling or bloating or all the fun things that come with having a GI disorder. So how does this little guy stay in? Well, this post here goes through the abdominal wall into wherever, depending on the patient, depending on where they place it. And then they take this little syringe here and they fill it up with water or saline Saline is salt water, it just depends on what your hospital prefers to do. My hospital prefers to just use regular water. So they fill up the syringe, you can pretend that there's water in here, there's air. And if you can see, there are two ports here. One is the actual feeding port, like that. And then there's one over here, on the side, that is your balloon port. So, syringe filled with fake water attach that to your little Mickey button here and then ready magic now you got a little balloon that'll act as your bumper 
So say my fingers are your stomach, your tube sitting against your stomach, you got it plugged into your feeds and your sister trips over the cord. Oof. The balloon is going to keep it from pulling out. Hopefully. Enough force and it'll come out, which has not happened to me yet and I hope never does. And then like every six months you get it changed out so they pull out the water, pull out the tube, put a new one in, and fill that balloon. Easy. For some people, these leak a little bit around the hole. Totally normal, so they might choose to put some gauze around it. Or what you also commonly see are these really cute little tube pads that have a little button and you can wash them. They just slip right around the tube like that. And they're super great. Mine doesn't really leak anymore, so I very rarely use tube pads anymore, but I do still have some laying around. Because you definitely want to keep it dry. You don't want an infection. It's just like taking care of a new piercing. In fact, it's a lot like a piercing. And also, like a piercing, when you first come out of surgery, you don't get one of these fancy little, little profile buttons. Unfortunately, when you come out of surgery, you come out with a much bigger tube. It has a hard bumper on the inside and a hard bumper on the outside, and it sticks straight out and doesn't detach. These usually have to stay in for at least six weeks before you can switch it out for one of these lower profile tubes. That is just to ensure that the tract heals properly and your feeds and meds don't end up going into your abdominal cavity which would be really bad. So as annoying as the tube is, it is very necessary. The little profile ones are just a lot more comfortable and easy to conceal. Like I said, like a piercing, you gotta wear the boring earrings for six weeks before you can change them out for like the cool hoops. Does anyone actually wear hoop earrings anymore? I'm not really sure on that one. So now feeding with the feeding tube. I know it sounds kind of gross, but really it's just like drinking a milkshake except that your esophagus is a slightly different kind of tube than this one. It all goes to the same place. Plus, if it's super gross, I don't have to taste it, which is a total win. So there are two main ways to do the feedings. I started out with bolus feeding and ended up on a pump. A bolus feeding is when you are pouring a large quantity of formula at one time throughout the day. So it's kind of like a meal. That is how I started out. It didn't end up working out for me because I wasn't getting enough calories and I was having issues with my blood sugar and blood pressure. But I do still pour most of my medication through my tube. We just crush and dissolve my pills. So how you do that is you have an extension. The extension hooks up to the Mickey button and it also hooks up to a syringe. If you're doing bolus or medications, you just pour it right into the syringe or you have the choice of using a plunger which keeps extra air from getting in and it allows you to put a little bit more pressure in case you're using something thick or maybe your tube is prone to clogging. It's important to remember to prime the extension tubing and get all of the air. So then you just attach the extension to the Mickey button. Basically you just open up this little valve here. You take the extension pushes right in, turn it to lock it, and then I have the syringe here, flushes right in, simple as that, and always remember to clamp it. When I'm pouring medications, same deal, just take the pill crusher with the dissolved meds, pour it right in the syringe. Normally, this would be done lying down. It's a lot easier. Gravity is on your side. For the sake of filming, this is going to take a little bit longer. Clamp. Always flush with a little bit of water. And as for the actual feeding, like I said, I use a feeding pump, which looks like this. It's attached to a bag of the formula. And I do have to carry it with me wherever I go. I charge it over the night. I pretty much run feeds all of the time. If I try to do it intermittently, my blood sugar just doesn't really like that. So it does kind of stink to have to haul it around all the time, but it's not so bad. I found some cute bags it fits in. The pump just attaches to the extension, 
the same way that everything else does i'll show you this is attached to the bag filled with formula that i've loaded into the pump just attaches straight onto this extension right here then i just push the button and voila easy meal a lot of times people can't even tell that i have a feeding tube it's not super noticeable the only giveaway is kind of the tube leading to my bag but if you position things correctly and you wear a lot of sweaters, no one has to know. Although I like to think I'm pretty open about it and it doesn't really make me very self-conscious. It's not super limiting. I can pretty much do anything except go in hot tubs. It's actually given me more freedom because now I can leave the house and feel confident and not have to be worrying about what I'm eating all the time and I'm worrying about getting sick in public. You guys do sometimes ask me, <laughs> What these things are, these are just little clips that I make that I use to clip the tube into so that when I'm a klutz and I trip on the cord, it pulls here or wherever I have it clipped instead of pulling out. It's literally just like a little piece of ribbon and a snap. I do make and sell these. I'll put my Etsy shop link down below. I think my Etsy shop might be about to go down for some maintenance but it'll be up again soon. Okay, well now you guys pretty much know all about my feeding tube. <laughs> I did the video on why I have it, what it was like getting it placed, some various questions. Now you've seen it, you've seen it in action, and I hope this has helped to kind of demystify feeding tubes a little bit for you. Obviously this is just my feeding tube, and there are many different kinds of feeding tubes. Some go up the nose, some go straight through your stomach, some go into the stomach itself, some go into the intestines, some go into both. Some people have long tubes, some people have short tubes, some people have low profile buttons. There are a lot of different ones, but the main idea is pretty much the same. And I hope you've learned that having a feeding tube doesn't necessarily mean that someone's dying or that they've given up or that everything is all downhill from there. There are so many of us out there who are just living our lives as normal people who just eat a little bit differently than you, and that's pretty much the only difference. Come on, this really isn't all that scary, is it? And if you still think it's freaky and gross, sorry, I'm just living my life, and this just happens to be part of it. Alright guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it answered some of your questions or made you feel a little bit less alone. Or maybe you just accidentally stumbled upon this part of YouTube and have had your curiosity satisfied. I don't think that there's anything wrong with curiosity and I think it helps to aid in awareness and just make everybody overall a little bit more understanding. So I know this is a topic that always leaves people with a lot of questions. If you do have more questions, you can leave them down below and I'm thinking I'll probably do another feeding tube Q&A video someday. It's not a day goes by that I do not get some kind of question about it and I am totally happy to answer them. So if you liked this video and you'd like to see more of them, you can hit the like button. You can subscribe. I do videos sort of like this, but I also do weekly vlogs if you want to follow along on my life and my journey through chronic illness and, of course, the feeding tube. <laughs> and I think that is it. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!